the yogis is also being extinguished. Despite the presence of monasteries and monks in exile, the complete cultural environment that produced the mind masters of the past no longer exists. Without the unbroken lineages of yoga teaching yogi, without the vast stretches of time to spend years in isolated retreat free from earthly distractions, and mostly without the devoted support of the ancient Tibetan civilization, the tradition of the yogis is nearing extinction. Once the most reclusive people in the world, they are coming forward now with unprecedented candor to preserve their legacy of 1,000 years. Living out their lives amongst us are the last of the master yogis of Tibet. To grasp the loss at stake with the loss of the master yogis, it is vital to understand what they have contributed to human development during their unique history. While the most advanced thinkers in the West developed the physical sciences to improve the outward state of humanity, the yogis developed a science of the mind to improve the inward state of humanity. Improving the emotional and moral response of the mind was their lofty goal to transform patterns of thinking and alter patterns of acting by conquering anger, aggression, greed, pride, jealousy, even subdue states of physical discomfort. The techniques they developed to achieve these results are only now being recognized and affirmed by Western study of the brain and body. Central to the tradition of the yogis is the passing down of extensive teachings and highly guarded practices for training both body and mind. Within each order of monks, the detailed lineages of yogis, their students, and their techniques are recorded with great care. Each lineage bears a unique name and approach. With roots stretching back to Tibet's first master yogi, Naropa, the Drikung Kagyu lineage has long been renowned for producing highly advanced yogis. The Drikung Kagyu lineage has been running continuously without any kind of breakage in between or any kind of adulteration. That is starting from the founder of the lineage right down to this present day. When we look back in retrospect, there were so many highly regarded, highly realized yogis. The blessings are passed from one master to the other, right down to this present day. That is our specialty. I think back to Shen, uh, how to say, you benefit your mind. The academic is just knowledge. Maybe you become a teacher, you teach in the terms, and this, this is one thing. But the practitioner, you have received you some blessings. And you, if you don't have this blessing in this lineage, then you cannot have certain power to help benefit other people. And also, someone who not go to the academic school, but his practice, he certainly opened his wisdom. And he also know other people, how they need to benefit. He will know. What is it then that defines a yogi? How do they differ from the ordinary monk? Outwardly, few clues are to be found. The most lucid answers to the question come from those who have walked the path themselves. A yogi is a person who has a profound experiential understanding of the true nature of all phenomena. A yogini is the practitioner who does extensive retreats and one who has gained experiential understanding of the teachings. So it would have to be someone who has not only received ordination, but someone who has done extensive retreats. A yogi means one who enters into the Dharma, 
or Buddhist teachings, and after that one who does the practice, which is about the mind, training the mind to be always at ease, always at peace. That is the definition of a yogi. Dharma lives within the yogi. Yogi follow the Dharma. If you really live on the Dharma, nothing can harm you. Even though they can be taken this life, but they cannot take next life. What a yogi or yogini strives to do is to put an end to the suffering that exists in cyclic existence. In order to do that, a yogi or yogini has to train his or her mind. Simply stated, a yogi or yogini will strive to counter all the negative emotions and try to generate positive energy. Experienced, qualified retreat person, even he remained in a, uh, what's it, a uh, street, street, a lot of noises, a lot of people, a lot of cars there, but his mind can remain fully concentrated. If someone is who have not that, qual that, that qualified, like I think myself, even remain in a remote area, try to meditate, my mind go everywhere. <laughs> Keeping the mind from going everywhere is precisely the challenge in meditation. And for centuries, aspiring yogis have retreated to remote places to avoid distraction while training their minds. Imagining life removed from society for years at a time can be difficult for Westerners accustomed to a world of virtually non-stop interaction. The question of where is another challenge. For Tibetans in exile, such places still exist in the Indian Himalayas beyond the reach of the Chinese. One of the 24 sacred places in Tibetan Buddhism is Lapchi, a meditation place, a milarepa, one of Tibet's first yogis revered for abandoning a criminal lifestyle and attaining enlightenment within a single lifetime. A monk hiked for six days with a heavy camera into the mountains to bring back a glimpse of this primitive retreat. Even now, the images he recorded were permitted with reluctance. If the notion of pursuing enlightenment seems vague or inscrutable, the path of the yogi is in fact quite specific. The techniques and practices developed over a millennium are revealed to them in a rigorous order and only by an accomplished practitioner. Their beginning premise is that the untrained mind is like a raging elephant out of control. The yogi's initial task is to slowly put reins on the leaping, erratic thoughts of the mind by using specific tools, the repetition of core beliefs in mantras, and exercises to empty the mind of conceptual thought. Two yogis in retreat in Lapshi agreed to an interview, an unheard of opportunity. <laughs> You have come to Lapchi when I have taken a few days break in my retreat. This is an auspicious coincidence and something like this can only happen because of past connections and aspirational prayers. Milarepa went on a very long retreat in Lapchi and reached enlightenment through the practice of Tumo. He left several footprints on the rocks of Lapchi which attract many pilgrims. The disciples of...